Thank you, Jesus, you are holy. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on other cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. But it does not temptation, but deliver us from the vices of evil. For that is the kingdom, honor, and authority. The Bible says, the word of God this morning, that they, we are justified by faith in Jesus, by grace. It's not by our own power. The Bible says in the book of Romans 3.23, that every human being is born a sinner. We are all sin and land short of glory of God. We are saved. Nobody is born uh, clean or holy. We are born as sinners. And we are land of short of glory of God. And God saw man not worthy or fit before him. He sent his only begotten son Jesus. And whoever believes in him, he will be made holy by believing in Jesus. Not by any other. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not yourself it is gift from God not of works lest anyone should boast no one should boast that he is holy or he is worthy before God we are saved by faith by grace in Jesus it's by grace or by faith through Jesus and because of mercy that God had on us, you say, if you believe you have faith in Jesus, you will have mercy. You receive mercy from God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 13, 8 to 39, Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pressure for him. God has no protection for those who are turning back. Remember the Ruth's wife. He drew back and he turned to a stone of salt. God has no protection for back, backwardness. When you turn back because of problem, when you turn back because your family is being destroyed by the enemy, your property are being destroyed, your, your foundation are being wrecked by the enemy like Job. Job did not go back. He said, you are awesome in this price. You are faithful. You keep saying Jesus is faithful when the foundation were being broken. The Bible says, when the foundation are being broken, by the enemy are being wrecked. What can a righteous man do? That's what the Bible says. The righteous man go to their knees. A man is powerful at his knee. So they just, Hebrews 10, that 8, they just to 39. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pressure for him. The just shall live by faith. When ye haki wataishi kwa imani, those who trust in Jesus, those who are just, they shall live by faith. You don't have to you don't have to see where you're going. You don't have to see what will happen tomorrow. You don't have to see what will happen next. You don't have to see your journey from A to B. But we go by the eyes of faith. And we are justified by faith. So the word of God today, this morning. Is from the book of uh, book of Acts of Apostles, chapter number nine, chapter number ten, verse nine to fifteen, and also the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter number Galatians chapter number two, verse eleven to twenty one. This is a story about Peter. Peter, God showed him a dream. God knew Peter and God sees our heart. God knows us. You know, the devil do extrapolation to find us, to know us. Like, God asks for permission to test Job, to know whether he's a Christian. But God already knows Job is a Christian because he was an upright man. But the devil, he extrapolates and tries to, to understand you, to learn you. He can learn you for man. But God knows us better. There's a song that says, When he drew a beer, my buana. So God knew Peter. I knew Peter believed that Gentiles are not like completely perfect because they don't get circumcised. They are not completely well before God or before people, even before Jews, because they were not circumcised. The Gentiles they don't they didn't use to go through initiation or circumcision. But the Jews did, and Peter believed that they are not right before God because of the act of the law that like circumcision. The Bible says in the last days, uh, the Antichrist and the power of the devil and the loop of the devil and the crew of the enemy of the end time deception will come with their own, own laws. They will come with their own laws. They will come with their own ways of life, their own culture. But we are not saved by law. We are saved by grace, by faith in Jesus. So Jesus, or God, so Peter will not accept 
to preach to the Gentiles. He not accept to stay and spread the word with them or pray for them because he knew they, he, they are not circumcised. God gave Peter a dream in the book of Acts of Apostles. Peter saw a dream at night. He was told to eat reptiles, animals, the animals with the four legs like wild beasts or beasts. Uh, it was in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter number 10 verse 12. He said, in, uh, in, in it were all kinds of four-footed animals, on earth, white bees, creeping things, and birds of the air. And the voice came, that was the voice of God, lies up Peter and kill and eat. Peter told God, and not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything unclean or uncommon, or anything common. I have never eaten unclean things because, of course, we know we don't eat reptiles. We don't eat uh, snakes. So Peter said, I, we, I can't eat things that we don't eat in our culture. But God told him in the dream again that, uh, that what God has cleansed, you must not call common or unclean. This was done three times and the object was taken up into heaven again. So God brought a dream to Peter and told him, eat this reptile, eat these four animals, who are creeping animals and birds of the air and beasts, white beasts. Or animals of the earth that we don't eat and say I cannot eat things that we don't eat but God could see Peter he, was, he wanted to 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 so to come to him in a parable show him that uh, there's somewhere he could see Peter somewhere he'll go and meet Gentile and he will act hypocritically which was fulfilled when um, in the book of Galatians when Paul was coming with some disciple and saw Peter acting in a hypocritical way Galatians chapter 2 verse 11 to 21 uh, Paul was coming with some apostles or some brethren and Peter was eating with and staying with Gentiles together and talking to them about God. When he saw the Jews coming, Peter ran away so that he is not seen sitting with people who are not circumcised. And Paul opposed him openly. The Bible says in the book of Titus chapter 2, the last verse, that we need to rebuke with authority. Paul was rebuking Christians who are not right with God or do, doing hypocritical way. He rebuked Peter and tell him off. Openly and told him, Peter, we are not justified by work of the law, like circumcision. You cannot compare the Jews, the Gentiles to live like Jews. You cannot force them to live. Why do you want to live like Jews and keep your tradition, your God, and you want Gentiles to take your religion, your culture? So you cannot force Jeter to leave your culture so they are Christian. No. If you are saved because of that, then Christ came for nothing. That's what Paul told him. Because if we are saved because of being circumcised, then why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus come to save mankind? If you are saved, if you, when you are get circumcised, you are saved before God. Then why did Jesus come? Because the Bible says in, in Romans 3.23 that we are born sinners. It is only God had mercy on us to send his son Jesus to act as a cross bridge. That when you believe in God, you get saved. You receive mercy. That you believe that Jesus came to die for you. To remove you from sin. Remember olden days, people used to clean animal, to kill animal, to get cranes. Where there was a horror of horrors. And people used to go there. Only the priests were allowed to go there to sanctify people out of their sinful immorality, jealousy, all the things they have been doing for like six months. Then priests used to enter holy of holies, they slaughter a sheep and they they pray, they sacrifice the animal, the people were cranes. But when Jesus died at 12 a.m. midnight, that curtain of holy of holies was cut into two. And since then we are not cleans by sheep. No animal should be killed, no blood should be said that we are clean. Sometimes the devil comes to us and says, you have my debt. We don't have debt for the devil. Jesus paid it all in the cover. We don't have debt of the enemy. Tell the devil off and tell him, Jesus paid it all in the cavalry. When the curtain was cut into two, the curtain of holy of horrors, there is no more ram sacrifice or animal sacrifice or shedding of blood to sanctify people. You know, the last day there will be a lot of worship of Satan and the devil always asks blood to give you something. Come out of those kind of evil deceptive doctrines of demons, which are written in the book of First Timothy chapter 4, that in the last days people will leave God and give his deceiving spirit and doctrines of demons that will come and when they deceive you, you know the devil has nothing and when he comes to you, he will claim blood and he is cheating you just to buy time so you are caught up. 
when Jesus will come in the air, you are caught up. Or when you die, you don't have time to repent. So Paul opposed Peter. Paul was very bold and was opposing. These last days we need mighty men of God like Elijah who could tell the king off. We are not going to kiss the bar to live for food. We are not going to worship your God. Let's test who is the true God. We need mighty men who rebuke the work of the iniquity. Peter told Paul, we are not saved by circumcision or by work of the law. So it says in verse 11, when Sephas, Sephas is another name of Peter, came to Antioch, I opposed him to his, his God Peter, unless Sephas lock, he had several names. When Sephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the gender because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy so that the, the hypocrisy of even Barnabas was led astray. When I saw that they were not acting in the line with the truth of the gospel, that is power, I said to save us in front of them all, you are a Jew. Yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentile to follow Jewish custom? We who Jews by birth, not sinful Gentiles, know that a person is not just faith by the works of the law, by, but by faith in Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ that we be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law because the works of the law no one will be justified but if in seeking the just, justified in Christ we Jews find ourselves uh, also among the sinner okay the 17th I repeat but if in seeking to be justified in Christ we Jews find ourselves also among the sinner doesn't that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. I, re I rebuild what I destroy, then I really rebuild. I would be a rule breaker. So if you rebuild what you destroy, then you are a rule breaker. For through the law, I died in the law so that I might be live, I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I not only live, but Christ lives with me. That was power. Then the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave, gave himself to me. I do not set aside the grace of God for his righteousness. If righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. So, we are not justified by the work of the flesh or the law. If it's that, then Paul was insisting that we, we died for nothing. Uh, sorry, Christ died for nothing. So we are not justified by the work of the law. Like circumcision, going to church every Sunday by preaching to people a powerful sermon, by singing, reading songs uh, very well, or by going to church, or by helping people. Those things, like preaching, singing, they take us in the presence of God and bring the anointing of God and they lift our Christian life. But if you're doing it not connected with God, it's all in vain. Before you sing, before you preach, before you play, before you fast, you should believe. God should see your heart and see you believe in Jesus. It is that belief, that, that inside conviction, that inside confession, that inside audacity con belief that cannot be moved by any power. It is that faith. Remember, faith moves mountain. That faith in you, say, no way. That made Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, no way, we, even if you put fire seven times, we will not worship your God. That belief that I will not leave my God, that then made Daniel not scared of a lion, that belief inside you, that made Paul not to scare of prison and pray with Sarah until the prison was open. That belief saying no way, whether you have been told you will be cut, that is what saved us, believing in Christ. Whether you are singing, whether you are preaching, the faith, the inside confession should be seen from heaven triumphant. The God should see. God should see. Satan should see. Because if Satan doesn't see it, he claim you. He told God, Revelation 12, 12, Satan claim us and say, I want this man. He is a reporter. He reports us in, to God every day and claiming us. I want this man. He's not a Christian. Let me test him like he did for Job. But his sight 
of vision for Job was wrong. Job was a Christian and he was jealous of his surprise days. So it is the faith that will make us justified in God. Paul opposed Peter and told him, we are not justified by the work of circumcision or law. And God told Peter, be well before in act of apostles. Eat these reptile animals, these birds. And Peter said, we don't eat things and clean our culture. So people, Peter could see gentle and unclean. That's why God provoked him in a dream. Tell him that Peter, if I sanctify something, don't have attitude to it. Do you have an attitude to someone? Do you have an attitude to certain culture or people that they are not Christian? Do you have an, um, a belief that somebody is not Christian? The Bible says in Matthew 7, don't judge because the same measure you use, you will be judged. Pray for people who think they are not ready with God. Pray for them. Don't sit in God's seat and claim and try to judge others. There is force that will come in last days to judge Christian. And there's a man who sit in God's chair saying, you have to worship me. But those who know their God will resist and pray to God. And he will sit in God's chair. No one is allowed to sit in God's seat. Either by force like Antichrist or by judging. When you are judging, you are also sitting as an Antichrist. Judging people that you are God. You are, you are saying this is not right. You say, don't remove somebody's eye. And you have not removed something from somebody's eyes. And you have not removed from yours in Matthew 7. So the judge shall live by faith. When you have to take your money, for you to see where you are going, you need a, a, a naked, a, a, a faith eye, a faith eye, an eye that does not see by sight. You don't go by sight, you go by faith eye. You don't have to see where you are going. You don't have to see how you're going to live next year. You don't have to see where you are journey the whole year. You don't have to see the whole journey, but you live by the word of God. Remember Jesus told Satan, I will not live by bread alone, but in every living word of God. I don't have to see where I'm going, but the Bible say by faith I'll make it. It doesn't, I don't have to understand things, but the Bible say if I pray, everything will be all right. Oh, to God in prayer. Oh, because you do not carry everything to God in prayer. The Bible say in Revelation, God will not allow his people to know a lot of things, deep secret of Satan. God will not allow his people to know so much deep secret of Satan, but because our spiritual is pray. If we pray, we'll be right with God. Today and the days to come, you need to know, don't get satisfied because of the things you are doing, like preaching, singing, going to church every Sunday. The Bible says the end time, the, the, the force of deception will be come with their own laws. The enemy will come with his own law. He will force people to worship church. You have to go on Sunday to be compulsory. Those things cannot save us. It is by believing in Christ. Whether you worship certain day doesn't matter, like being right with God. The enemy will come with his own law, their own way of life, their own type of food. The Bible says in the book of Peter, I think Peter, he will come with, or Timothy, he will, he will become with various food. You have the, the false food doctrines. They will tell people to eat, to abstain from certain food. I think in first, first Timothy chapter 4, they will, be, they will be having certain food that uh, they can eat. And Jesus said, the food you eat does not make us unclean. Un, un, un that was Jesus to his disciples. It is one you speak in your mouth. Whatever you speak comes from the heart. That's what defiles you. Whatever is coming out of your mind, is that defile you. Before you go to sin there, before you go to do that immorality, before you go to, to do something evil or to steal, it has to come from your mind. Before you do any act of evil or sin, it has to come from your mind or heart. It is that that defile a man, not by food or by doing certain things. It's when God sees you are right with him by believing in Christ, that when you are saved, and when you are saved, you do the right thing. The Bible says Christians are not under the law. What does that mean? It means when you are Christian, you already do the right thing. So there is no way you cried with the law, that you should not steal. If you are Christian, you will not steal. The law say you should not steal somebody's property, you should not kill, you should not speed you should not speed the car or you should not uh, 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 take somebody advantage of someone you should not do any act of evil like go to steal somebody's house if you are christian you cannot do those things so the bible says if you are in christ you have not under the law so you don't cry with the law of blood 
because you always do the right thing. So if you believe in Christ and you live by faith and by just uh, live by faith, if you live in that kind of life, you'll not sin because you're always convicted by the Spirit of God to do the right thing. So we are justified by faith in Jesus, not by act of the law. Like going to church every Sunday, preaching, singing. That talent of yours of praying instrument, that talent of yours of preaching, that talent of yours to encourage people, that talent of, of yours to preach, that talent of yours to sing. Be careful, the enemy doesn't give, bring pride in it. Because the enemy bring pride, pride, pride. P pride, he bring pride to steal like he trying Jesus, if you are God, change this stone to be bread, he want the pride when you feel, ah, I know how to sing then you fail, ja the pride come before fall the devil have failed many Christians, many powerful pastors, many powerful evangelists, many international preachers because when they fear they can pray for sick people, receive hallelujah, and people can get healed the, the pride come in them and some say, I'll be a president, I'm gonna stand for a political, and you know politics is dirty but sometimes it's good for Christians to be in the leadership, but make sure you are not cheated by politics because sometimes politics can lead you to sin. It's good for you to have Christians in the government to make sure things are done like those, those days of Elijah they used to resist some evil and Martin Luther and, and people who live in government like Daniel. Like Shadow Michigan Ben, you know, they're working for government because they were clever. Nebuchadnezzar used to take clever people, whether Christian or not, to work for him. Like Daniel was a very clever man, very intelligent man. So he was chosen, though he didn't live according to the tradition of those people of bar worship, he was chosen because he was very smart. But people felt jealous and organized a law to put him in, in Daniel's den. dance, and the king was not happy because he loved Daniel. And the next morning he went to check, he said, Oh, Daniel is still alive. And he said, those people who conspired for Daniel to be put, they were mauled by before they reach. <laughs> because, like wolf, wolf eat animals in the air by throwing to each other. They were mauled before they reach the down because they they had conspired, but God protected Daniel. Daniel, so my point was, Daniel was chosen because of clever man. Nebuchadnezzar used to choose clever people to work for him, even Christian. Even the last day will come the same. They will be choosing those who are clever to work for the king and Daniel did not waver his faith so it is good for people to be in the government even those who know they are God to receive some law some tradition so we need to work according to the will of God we need to live by faith we need to know we are justified by doing the right thing believing in Christ no be careful as we end up that you are not cheated by the enemy by the gift you have the enemy doesn't steal it by pride the devil uses pride like you're telling Jesus if you are God he wanted God to boast to fail him because God can change stone to be bread but Jesus told him you shall not test the Lord your God or you shall not live by bread alone but every living of God and he knew also Jesus was was dusty, was hungry. The devil also focused on your weakness. Jesus was coming from fasting 40 days, was very hungry, so he knew Jesus may want to eat something. He was telling me, why don't you change this stone to be blessed so you can eat something? And also for Jesus to boast that he's God. So make sure the devil doesn't fail you because of capitalizing on your weakness or capitalizing on what you know best to feel you, you feel proud and he fail you. So know that you be justified when God check in your heart and say you are right with him, you believe in Christ, that he came to die for you, that it is by praying to Jesus you receive mercy. So do I. It is by mercy, it is by mercy, it is by mercy that I have been saved. It is by mercy, 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 I have been saved, Rabu Yakaya. It is by mercy, it is by mercy, it is by mercy. By mercy, I am called holy. It is by mercy, it is by mercy, it is by mercy. It is by mercy, it is by mercy, it is by mercy. It is by mercy.
mercy, it is by mercy and faith in Christ. It is by mercy, it is by mercy. Ni kwa nema kubwa ya Yesu, ni kwa nema Yesu, ni kwa nema.